Hello, and welcome to our virtual booth. We want to take the opportunity today to present our chemical conversion platform that we believe will provide an economic breakthrough and a more sustainable approach towards improving the properties of heavy crude and bitumen. We have named it the Hydrochemolytic Technology Platform, or HCT. For your information, the length of the presentation is about 20 minutes and a total of 13 slides. You will find our contact information at the last slide. Please note that as you listen to this presentation, members of the Aduro team are just a click away for further discussions or questions. Aduro Clean Technology is interested in initiating discussion with any organization that finds this material relevant. Before we begin, please note that during both the presentation and the question and answer session, we will make forward-looking statements regarding future events, performance, plans, expectations, and other projections. Actual events or results could differ materially. We refer you to the SEDAR filings. An archive of this webcast will be available on our website, including the slides being presented today. With that, let us begin. So what is hydrochemolytic? The name hydrochemolytic is a combination of hydro for water and chemolytic for chemical deconstruction. Simply put, we apply chemistry in the presence of water to drive a chemical conversion process. For instance, let us examine our hydrochemolytic bitumen upgrading process, known as HBU. While there are other hydroconversion technologies in development, Aduro's process utilizes the metals native to bitumen to act as a catalytic agent. Within the same reaction, the process also provides hydrogen saturation, but rather than using hydrogen gas, we introduce bio-based material. All of this occurs at around 350 degrees Celsius, a significantly lower temperature than traditional upgrading approaches. We are very excited to show you how the process works and demonstrate its potential. The HBU process enables pipeline transport with minimal to no diluent required. The final product is stable, fungible, and easily blended into the Western Canadian Select Stream. We are focusing on building data that demonstrates the potential for a significant boost to the economics and sustainability of bitumen producers. The use of hydrogen equivalents from alternative sources provides a synergistic and environmentally responsible approach compared to traditional processes that require added hydrogen gas. Our lower temperature reactions require less heat input, making a further contribution to sustainability. The HBU process removes upwards of 90% of metals from the bitumen. Although we use this metal in the process, we accumulate quite a large surplus. These metals are ejected with the water, and the surplus can be sold as an additional revenue stream. Let's discuss our history as a company. We started working on our technology in 2011 with a focus on upgrading bitumen. At the time, we named the process hydrothermal. Along the way, we discovered and understood the huge role played by the metals as catalysts in the reaction, and as we branched out into renewable oil research, specifically corn oil, we further discovered the role that glycerol plays as a source for hydrogen equivalents. We then developed the boundaries for the chemistry to be applied to deconstruct plastics, we have seen impressive results. Initial experiments with polyethylene indicate yields of 90% and over 98% purity in the product that could return as input material for new plastics. Additionally, we have been working hard to capture our discoveries. To date, we have secured seven pending and granted patents. But we are not done increasing our understanding of the technology and its applications. Most of the work to date has been primarily done on our batch reactor, which is located in our lab at the University of Western Ontario. Using this reactor, we were able to establish the key process drivers and discover the power of metals working with water and the use of alternative hydrogen equivalents. We recently progressed to a continuous 2 liter per hour reactor, shown here, to better understand the commercialization aspects of HBU. Part of the next phase of our work is understanding how far we can drive the conversion process, and our lab setup allows us to run multiple configurations to advance these optimization efforts. We envision moving to our next phase, a pilot plant, to fully validate and demonstrate commercial viability sometime in 2022. 
We plan to locate the pilot plant in Alberta, preferably at a bitumen production site, and we've had initial conversations with potential partners. So with that background, let's return to the HBU process so we can better understand just how it works. The best way to describe the HBU process is to quickly walk through an illustration to show how relatively straightforward the process is and how it could readily integrate into a thermal operation. The heart of our technology is the reactor that operates at moderate temperatures of between 300 and 350 degrees Celsius, significantly lower than typical upgrading technologies. In this case, we show a single reactor, but we are also contemplating different reactor configurations with increasing severity to further drive conversion and improve product quality. The final number of reactors will be driven by economics. We begin by introducing the bitumen feed. For higher efficiency and yield, we are targeting the larger asphaltine molecules. For that reason, we will flash off the lighter end so we can avoid any unnecessary cracking of molecules. The flashed material will later be combined with the HBU product for sales. Our goal is to get the heavier molecules into the reactor, so while we are showing a flashed bitumen as a feed, residue cuts or solvent deasphalted feedstocks would work as well. We use water as the medium for the chemistry, but also for other functions. These include transferring heat, transporting the coagents, and maintaining a suspension of the crude and the coagents in the reactor. Unlike other conversion processes, HBU does not use hydrogen gas, which is normally derived from natural gas via steam methane reforming. Instead, HBU uses bio-based material to create a hydrogen equivalent, which is immediately available to upgrade the asphaltine and improve the product stability. It is worth noting that we don't need to use expensive hydrogenation catalysts nor the excess energy to run elevated temperatures required in most hydro-treating processes. As for the hydrogen equivalent, in the lab we started with glycerol to conduct our initial development. Since then, we have qualified many other sources of hydrogen equivalents, cellulose being one of them. We also qualified input material derived from waste plastics, we are now evaluating the use of ethanol and methanol, both currently available in Alberta at prices that fit our economic model. The technology can use various bio-based materials, which gives it great flexibility. We're not talking about Alberta only, but also looking at integration of the HBU in refineries across the world, where such material may be readily available. Aduro would be interested in discussions with any company that might see the possible synergy. The other key coagent is our catalyst. All the metals that we use to drive our reactions are available in the bitumen. In the case of bitumen, metals are extracted into the water where they are accumulated. We simply drive them back into the reactor until we reach the necessary concentration level. As you can see, water carrying the catalyst and the hydrogen equivalent into the reactor mixes with the heated bitumen at temperatures between 300 and 350 degrees Celsius. The upgrading reactions are a deconstruction of the asphaltine molecules, followed by a saturation of the broken chains. The fact that this deconstruction and saturation occurs, essentially simultaneously, simplifies the process significantly. The product from the reactor is sent into a separator, where the water and gas are separated from the HBU product. Due to the lower reaction temperatures, the amount of gas produced from the reaction is relatively low, which is a key driver in maintaining a higher liquid yield. The HBU liquid product is combined with the original pre-flashed liquids. The generated gas could be used as fuel to offset purchased gas. The recombined product is then cooled and flashed prior to sale, as is normally done with thermal operations. The heavy metals resident in the bitumen are significantly reduced. Over 90% ends up in the process water. This metal reduction also provides two additional value adds. It improves the value of the crude as it reduces the downstream hydro-treating required to manage the metals, and it also provides an additional revenue stream. The water used is recycled. I hope you can now see why we think that the hydrochemiletic process can be easily integrated into an existing thermal operation quite effectively. This is because of the already available resources. Such integration allows Aduro's HBU to be a relatively low-cost, bolt-on upgrading process. 
It also allows us to target smaller producer operations down to 10,000 barrels a day. As for the final product, this is an example of one run of the combined flash and HBU. As you can see, the sulfur and metals are significantly reduced, sulfur in excess of 30% and metals by upwards of 90%. Also, since the hydrogenation occurs in the reactor, unstable olefins are reduced to below pipeline specifications without the need for post-hydro treating. As a result of these factors, we believe that blending this into a WCS stream would produce a premium product with higher value than current specifications. However, with further lab work, we envision driving that value even higher. Given these facts, we think that hydrochemiletic technology provides an upgrading breakthrough. As a reference, we would like to point to the 2019 Alberta Innovative Knowledge Gaps Report, written by Professor Murray Gray. The report highlights four key challenges that need to be overcome to make upgrading an economic reality for producers. Aduro's hydrochemiletic process addresses each one effectively. First is viscosity and density reduction, as they are key drivers for producers to help reduce costly diluent and meet pipeline specifications. Second is the value enhancement of the product, especially for partial upgrading. Basically, the properties of the HBU crude are improved, with stable, higher API crude, less sulfur and less metals, creating add-on value in the final product. In doing so, HBU addresses the issues of product fungibility and can be easily integrated into the WCS stream. Finally, the report recognized realities of the current upgrading technologies and the huge economies of scale required to make them economically viable. From day one, we envisioned a field upgrading technology that could be used by a wide range of producers without requiring these economies of scale or massive infrastructure. We are now building the data for the capex of the process. It looks favorable, but requires more work prior to presentation. The opex is also expected to be relatively low with smaller, simpler processing units, as well as the ability to integrate into existing thermal operations. We continue to explore and qualify low-cost hydrogen equivalents, as well as assessing technologies required for our metal operations. Let us now present you with an illustration using an HBU upgrader on a production site in Fort McMurray. Of course, we have a lot of work to do prior to commercialization, and there is a lot of data we need to generate. We therefore have decided to present you with a model that is based on margin uplift. In this case, we use typical Fort McMurray 7 API bitumen, $60 WTI, and the standard premiums and discounts for diluent and WCS spreads, all in US dollars. We also assume there is an HBU upgrader on site and that we are using $45 for WCS price at Hardesty. We then build the estimated adjustment for quality and transportation. This is just to create a proxy for value at production site. Based on the calculated diluent required, we came up with a field price for the bitumen of just over $18 in a WCS barrel. Converting this to a bitumen basis is calculated at just over $25 per barrel at the gate. To make the case for margin improvement, we assume the bitumen as a feed cost to the HBU. Key to this cost is the yield, and one of the main benefits of Aduro's HC technology is that it runs at lower temperatures than traditional upgrading technologies, thereby reducing yield loss to gas. Some of the gas can be used for energy, so there is a fuel savings credit from the gas. In this illustration, we anticipate net yield in the 90 plus percent range, so adjusting these factors yield a net bitumen cost of around $26.50, Although in this illustration, we expect to achieve a pipeline quality product, we have added a margin for small amounts of trim diluent. With the improved properties in sulfur, metals, and hydrogen, we anticipate the HBU product will be marginally better than WCS and therefore result in a credit when blending into the stream. We add the adjusted quality and transportation to Hardesty. As you can see, the resulting net margin is almost $13 US or $16 Canadian per barrel for the upgraded bitumen. This is an approximately 50% improvement in the margin over Dilbit. This is quite significant from an overall economic standpoint and from reduced cost and risk related to reducing or eliminating the need for diluent. 
Aduro continues to pursue aggressive testing work to further optimize the yield and product quality, evaluating CAPEX and OPEX. Beyond the economic benefits, Aduro's mission is to provide sustainable technology solutions. Our technology aligns with this vision, specifically the application of HC technology to bitumen, which we submit will demonstrate a more sustainable upgrading process due to the following factors. Elimination or reduction of diluent and its associated shipping and return costs, lower temperature operations that reduce the overall fuel requirements and integrate far more easily with existing operations, using bio-based material as the hydrogen equivalent, and integration into existing facilities as a bolt-on solution. These are just a few of the advantages we see for our technology, and we will continue to develop a better understanding of these life cycle benefits as we move to our piloting phase of development. While 2021 was dedicated to the completion of our demonstration unit and some of the key steps discussed in this presentation, 2022 will see a shift in focus to a pilot installation. We envision a 5 to 10 barrel per day pilot ideally installed at a customer site. This will demonstrate feasibility and also allow us to investigate scale up. We are available at our booth and welcome the opportunity for further discussions with interested organizations, both producers and researchers. On behalf of the team and Aduro Clean Technologies, we would like to thank you for taking the time to watch our presentation. Note that we intend to provide updates as we make progress and generate more data. You can either let us know by clicking the button near the presentation and leaving your contact information or exiting the virtual presentation room and contacting one of our team members available on the platform and they will be happy to take your information also.